How's it going, guys? My name is Zach with The Movie Castle, and today we're going to be talking about The Unholy from 2021. Uh, so yeah, a new movie. This is, I think, actually the first 2021 movie I've covered on here. Um, so at the time of recording, still in theaters. Um, this is directed by Evan Spilatopis. I am not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. And this stars uh, Jeffrey Dean Morgan, who you may remember from uh, Negan on The Walking Dead. He was also in the horror movie The Possession a bit ago, which is a pretty good horror movie. Um, this is from Ghost House Pictures, which is Sam Raimi's production company. So we got Sam Raimi here as a producer, which is always good. Uh, the man, uh, a lot of people know him for Evil Dead and stuff, but he's actually had a, as of recently, especially a bigger career as a producer than a director. He's produced a ton of stuff. Uh, Crawl, remember that uh, quite recently? Uh, this is also based on a novel by James Herbert, and as a quick aside, it is one of the things that kind of bugs me. Um, back in the 80s, there was the 80s horror book uh, scene. You know, there's a ton of them, especially in paperback circulation, where there's all these classic 80s horror books, and it was really cool. Uh, Stephen King, obviously the most prevalent of them, but then you got, you know, Rice, Koontz, and Barker, who also had somewhat of a presence, um, not as big as King, but a pretty good presence. But there were all these other horror writers, uh, Richard Lehman, James Herbert, who did uh, this one, John Saul. There was a ton of people that could have had large movie careers if Hollywood would just, you know, make a good movie and then advertise that it was from a writer. They could have created a brand and in turn, you know, James Herbert really should have had a bunch of movies based on his books back in the 80s, but, um, yeah, Hollywood, uh, they kept wanting to make Stephen King stuff, which is great, but they never thought about, hey, if we would just focus, we could take another writer and turn him into another Stephen King, you know? that it, it always did bug me. There were so many writers with so many good books that you really could have got a lot more mileage out of this, and we could have really seen some great adaptations um, but anyway, yeah, James Herbert, um, but anyway, uh, let's go ahead and start talking a little bit about the, uh, the plot of this movie. Um, I'm not going to be doing any major spoilers, uh, but I do want to say my piece on a few plot points, and I do want to make sure you guys have a basic understanding as to what this movie's about. Um, we open up with a flashback sequence, a nice little prologue. You get a witch, uh, being, uh, tied to a tree, and having a mask nailed to her face as she's uh, killed. So, right away, there's not really any mystery with this. Uh, we know exactly what the spirit at the end of the movie is going to be from this prologue, but it is a cool, creepy opening. We cut to the future where we meet Jeffrey Dean Morgan, and he's a disgraced reporter. He used to be getting $6,000 a story, and now he's only getting $150 a story, so quite the, uh, the step down, um, he gets called out to this remote country town to do a story about cattle mutilation. He gets there and finds that it's just a prank. Uh, some kid put the Metallica M on one of the cows and that's it. Uh, and he's thinking the whole story is not going to get him any money at all. But then he finds under the tree from the prologue a little baby doll with a, a chain around it and the farmer explains it's some sort of a local ritual, and he says, hey, I can make a story here. He smashes it, and he's like, I'm going to tell this story about how you found this doll broken, and then the cattle, and how there's something afoot, and he starts trying to write his own story here, but of course, in the process, he does break this doll. He takes the pictures, and he's about to drive home when... In the road, this girl in white is crossing the road and she almost gets hit, but Jeffrey Dean Morgan swerves and hits a tree at the last moment, which admittedly is kind of a, a scene that gets repeated a lot in horror movies. If someone wants to make a compilation of a, you know, woman appearing in the road and the protagonist has to swerve off of it. Uh, but anyway, she follows her and she's actually going to the tree again and she starts talking to it. Now... Jeffrey Dean Morgan managed is to get her home, but they're like, 
talking? She can't talk. She She's never been able to talk or hear. And he goes, okay, something strange is here. I, I think I smell a story. And plus he can't leave because his car's broken. And the next day in church, sure enough, this girl does start talking. She says that last night she was visited by a spirit named Mary, which the whole church assumes is the, uh, the Virgin Mary from the Bible, and asked to uh, have the whole group meet up later for a message. Now, her uncle is actually the priest, and, she, uh, and he tries to uh, keep her inside, like, hey, this is a bunch of excitement, she doesn't need this, but she comes out and insists on doing it anyway, and she actually has this, uh, she meets this kid who her parents brought to this event hoping he'd get healed, and she makes him walk again. So she just committed a, a miracle, and at, that's getting everybody excited, and they think Mary's talking to her, she can do miracles, and the Catholic Church, if it is a miracle, wants to make the tree into a shrine, which would greatly boost tourism for this small and dying town, and a bunch of people would get lots of hope from that. But of course, you never know. You gotta question things that are too good to be true, which is really, you know, again, one of the morals of the story. Um, and we, as an audience, know from the prologue that this isn't really the Virgin Mary. This is some sort of witch creature. And I'll stop the plot there, because if I go much farther, that will be uh, spoiler territory. But um, getting into specific little things with this movie, uh, first and foremost, uh, one thing I want to say is this actually is not an anti-religious film, which is one of those things I was concerned with when I saw the trailer, plus it was originally released on Good Friday, you know, to, to make it scary. And to be honest, there's so much. You can go online and find a, a bunch of anti-religious ranting, and it's hard to do anything really new with that angle, and it tends to come out as kind of cliched, but that's not really what this story is about, and I was actually quite pleasantly surprised to see that the most uh, critical of the Virgin Mary, uh, supposedly, was actually members of the church. Her uncle really didn't believe it, and they send in, the Catholic Church sends in this Inquisitor guy, and he goes, it's my duty to try my best to disprove it, and he really is an interesting character, and I really did like him, and he tries his best to make sure that there's no other explanation, and it's cool to see the church not just, you know, dive in head first to this and really take a moment to, uh, to look at it. Amongst the, uh, the other positives, we obviously have Jeffrey Dean Morgan's performance. He does really good at, it's a washed up, disgraced reporter trying to get back in the good graces, finding a really unique story, and you see him having this nose for the story, like, before anyone knows anything is up, you see him with his camera, just ready and wanting to figure things out. But they also do a good job. He has the reporter's nose, and he's disgraced, but he's not really a bad guy, and you show him as a character that's making bad decisions and having lots of bad things happen around him, but he's not really a bad guy, and of course, Jeffrey Dean Morgan portrays that very, very well. And another big thing I want to shout out with this movie is it has a fairly cool creature design. Lady in a robe, cool mask, and you do get to see her for a fair bit. We're coming out uh, primarily thanks to James Wan with Insidious and then later some characters from The Conjuring. We're coming out of the vague Shadow Presence air. I got so sick of all these horror movies where their main antagonist was a vague yet menacing shadow figure and I hated all these boring shadow figures. They made their movies so boring and they all ran together and this really could have easily been a shadow figure movie and it wasn't and, and thank goodness for that. The design is pretty cool and that's the positives but I do have to say there is some flaws. Um, for those of you who are easily triggered by jump scares, I know there's a whole group of people nowadays that you say there's jump scares in a movie, they're just going to go, oh, and, and abandon it, and that is this movie. There is a, a ton of jump scares. Now, personally, 
I don't mind them if they're implemented well, you know, think Exorcist 3 and stuff. Um, and I don't mind if you're going to do a haunted house movie to do a haunted house movie, you know, like Annabelle Comes Home. That was the whole plot of the movie, run around, jump scares, and it was just fun. But the thing is, more than just that there are jump scares, is that it's a mix-matched tone. You see, this whole movie, the, the plot, really wants to be a slow-burn horror movie. It wants to build up the mystery and make you wonder what Mary really is and get you engrossed in it. You know, it kind of, the, the underlying plot wants to be something closer to Mothman prophecies. But the, the haunted house jump scare style movie gets placed in large chunks on top of this plot. So it wants to be a slow burn, but it has chunks of a jump scare haunted house movie placed randomly throughout it, and it really does feel mix-matched. Um, there's lots of really abrupt jump scares to the point where there's actually scenes where the characters are doing something, a jump scare happens, they go, whoa, and then they go right back to doing the scene almost like nothing happened, like you could really have cut that jump scare out, and the scene would have flowed just like a regular scene, probably been better. But the haunted house part of the movie if they had done that for the whole movie, if that was the movie's theme, then that would have been cool. But the fact that they're placed awkwardly on top of a slow burn horror movie does really kind of uh, mess it up. And I do wish they had picked one or the other, the haunted house style movie. You do get to see the creature a lot more and there were some fun moments, but they just didn't quite fit in the movie. Um, and if they had just, you know, straightened that out better, that would have been really cool, you know, maybe find a way to have scenes with the creature in it and make it look cool without going too far over the top, but it's hard to say how you'd exactly do that, but yeah, they just didn't quite fit. And also, you do get an exposition dump scene. There's a scene later on where they find a book, and most of the movie's plot is explained in one go, and I've talked about this before, but I feel like in real life, that is kind of how things would happen, is you'd find something and then they all come out, but from a storytelling standpoint, um, you want the mystery doled out in little pieces, but it, like, you know, in real life you find a book that explains everything, it would all just come out at once, but yeah, from a storytelling standpoint, it's just uh, not, uh, <laughs> not the best structure there. Um, but overall, I'd say that if you're familiar with, you know, low-budget horror movies with a ton of jump scares, this is a little better than a lot of those, but it's not a great horror movie. It doesn't, you know, pierce into that uh, realm, but at the same time, there's a lot of really garbage horror movies, and I don't want to say it's that, you know. Um, it's a little better than you think. It's a it's a, a, fear, a, a passable horror movie. It's enjoyable. You don't necessarily want to go out of your way for it. It's not great, but it is. It's totally watchable. And if you're okay with the movies, with the kind of forced jump scares, which you know you've seen a lot of, if you know the type of movie I'm talking about, if you like that type of movie, it's produced well enough, it's shot well enough, it looks really cool, a fun creature in Jeffrey Dean Morgan, but, you know, kind of awkward in tone, and yeah, the, the jump scares are jump scary jump scares, and, um... If you're fine with that, though, this is a totally passable movie. It was honestly a little better than I thought it'd be. Just nothing great. And hey, granted that uh, there's not that many movies out right now, if you want to go to the theaters and if you want to see a horror movie, this is pretty much your option. And it's not really bad. Just go in knowing what to expect, and you can have some fun with this. Um, anyway, to everyone who's watched so far, uh, thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed. Thank you. You're really helping the channel out. I'll put a relevant playlist down at the bottom if you want to see more. Uh, you can go there and find some more videos. I'm sure I have something uh, you'll like. Anyway, uh, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Relevant playlist on the bottom.